Welcome back to the Radio Heart YouTube channel. Today we are diving into comic book world with the best, question mark, DC comic book movie of the last 10 years, probably since the Dark Knight trilogy ended, uh, with The Suicide Squad, a soft reboot by James Gunn and Katie the Blonde in front of comic books, is here to talk to us about The Suicide Squad which is going to be followed up by, uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get into the Peacemaker maybe in the future when if we both have HBO Max. But for now, we're going to talk about The Suicide Squad. Yes, Freaks and Peaks. We're going to talk about The Suicide Squad, written, written and directed by James Gunn. And I'm going to look at my little tablet here because there are a lot of people in this one to go through. And starring, drumroll please, uh, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, Idris Elba as Bloodsport, John Cena as Peacemaker, Joel Kinnaman as Colonel Rick Flagg, Michael Rooker as Savant, uh, Viola Davis as Amanda Waller, uh, Jay Courtney as Captain Boomerang, uh, Floya Forg as Javelin, and um, actually just a whole lot more. There's just a whole lot more people, and believe me, if you have a favorite um, of the squad, buy the merch while you can because I don't want to spoil anything. I mean, it's been out for a few weeks now and stuff like that, but um, I can't I can't say who lives or dies, but let me tell you this. <gasps> Look at my Suicide Squad. Yeah, I am a fan. I am a fan of this film. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, I'm a fan. Uh, so, right now, we are at that lovely prison in New Orleans um, where everyone who goes there usually dies, except for the uh, lowliest of the low and the crimiest of the crimey, uh, these people who are going to be in task work, task, task, task force, force X. X. Can't even get it out. Um, uh, Viola Davis returns as Amanda Waller and as, um, you know, menacing as she was before. She is, damn, she's a force to be reckoned with. She has no superpowers other than intimidation. Let me tell you, she intimidates. This woman can do anything. She's got an Oscar. I'm guaranteed she's going to have a bunch more because she's one of the best. But she's um, making this new Task Force X. Uh, there's a number of people in it. They're funny. They're bold. Some of them, I don't even know what they do. And you know what? That is fine because a lot of them don't stick around for a while. Uh, as sequels go, usually the body count and the blood count goes up. Oh, believe me, Gunn has made sure of that because this is like a sequel reimagining sort of thing of the Suicide Squad. Uh, you've got body parts, you've got blood, you've got head explosions, you've got all the things that um, make this good, which is an R rating which is one of the things that if you're going to go that way, do it, make it an R because then you end up getting one of the best films of the year. And as Chris said, one of the best comic books, well, actually, yeah, one of the best comic book films, you know, M uh, DC. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And one of the best Marvel. comic book movies, th this hands down, as the list of comic book movies continues to grow, is, in my opinion, one of the best comic book movies ever made. Is it the best ever? No. no. It, I do not think one of the best. the best of DC. It's yes. <laughs> it's up there, definitely in this, you know, yeah. in, I would say in the past, definitely in the past five years. It, it, it's not it, it's bad, so, it, it, it's so funny, Katie, because DC blew Marvel out of the water with media content for a number of years. The Wonder Woman show, the Batman 66 TV show, the Superman movies when they were good, the Batman movies when they were good. You know, animated series obviously have kicked butt in, 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 in so much ways for DC. And then all of a sudden, like, Marvel is just, like, killing it. And, yes, their TV shows, you know, they're, like, doing this, but they've been mostly doing this this, this year, um, you know, and they just launched a what if. But that all aside or whatever, it, 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 it ebbs and flows with the DC versus Marvel, Warner Brothers versus now Disney uh back and forth back and forth back and forth or whatever but marvel is just it it and finally dc it, it seems to do a bad one do a good one do a bad one do a good one and you don't need to have watched the previous film you don't need to have watched the harley quinn movie either birds of prey honestly there's no connection whatsoever other than like the four returning actor characters um out of all the characters who was your favorite whether they lived or died <laughs> 
Uh, it's honestly, it's going to be a tie between, um, well, here's the thing. That's a double-edged sword though, because if you're talking about a new character that I have not known before, oh, right, 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 right. I'm going to say Polka Dot Man. If you're talking <laughs> about a character. Yes, did you see who, what he did with his cat? Yeah. Uh, he's great. One, I love David Desmulsion. I honestly, in this film, I hope out of, I know there's some, um, I don't know if we're going to talk about this. I know there's some TV shows going on. There's already oh. works with some stuff going on with some of the people in this. I really hope, especially from the fan love that's going out to Polka Dot Man and the backstory that we got to hear from his own mouth, I really hope we get a prequel to see. Because, I mean, he's got, what, eight brothers and sisters that stuff happened to that um, some lived, some yeah. died. And that will be really interesting because Polka Dot Man in the comic books is just a guy who steals stuff with polka dots. That's it. There's no, like, you know, abusive, icky mom fetish stuff at all experiment and be a superhero he has polka dots that he can dive into by the way to teleport himself someplace else like the spot which is a marvel villain i'm not going to get into but well, it, it, they really changed a lot of the dynamics of people's abilities like they gave blood sport dead shots kind of backstory because that's what happens to his daughter in the comics at some point she becomes kind of a stupid criminal gets in trouble and he's gonna figure out a way to help his daughter who's now like the worst criminal ever stealing a watch um but in the in the in the in the, in the comics blood sport is a guy who is just like the anti-vietnam war guy yes he did in the comic book shoot superman with a kryptonite bullet and the only thing that was able to stop him was lois hunted down his trip uh, quadruple amputee brother who was like in a wheelchair with missing his arms and legs and he breaks down crying in his brother's lap asking for forgiveness over you know like abandoning the you know he, he's a, he's by the way a draft dodger too his brother went in his place and got horribly mutilated in the vietnam war like really heavy stuff that just does not work in a film today <laughs> Uh, the whole thing about him like teleporting guns and being you know a super expert yeah, that that's kind of that's kind of true. Did you know, by the way, that Peacemaker is who the comedian from Watchmen is based on? That makes sense. I could see that. Um, yeah. But yeah, if I uh, for a new character, I would say Polka Dot Man um, with his backstory and just you know the full arc that he goes through and how connected I feel like he um, is to the audience. But for an evolution. Uh, I would say Harley Quinn. Um, yes. And I know you had said that, you know, you don't necessarily need to see the films before this. I would say to appreciate where Harley Quinn in, um, har where Harley Quinn is in this film, I think you need to see those two other films because she, uh, it's Stand just up, Katie. like in the first one, she goes from um, in Suicide Squad, you go with this whole like toxic gaslighting, um, uh, what is it? Toxic gaslighting. Um, Terrible like, relation. It's a, it's, an, it's a horribly abusive relationship yeah. with the Joker. And, By the way, show, and, show your shirt. Oh, your shirt. <laughs> Nobody can is, see your shirt. No one, no one is like me. <laughs> yes, that, that relationship with the Joker has to happen in media to show where she comes from so you can get one day hopefully the poison ivy relationship everyone wants her to be in uh margot roby has gone on record saying i am done with harley quinn for now it is exhausting to play her i've had to play her now twice in four years i'm exhausted it's such an exhausting role i love it but I want to do stuff I don't have to be in like tip top shape for. So. <laughs> oh, and I believe it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a range um, to get where she is. And yeah. she, you know, she goes from being in this horribly toxic relationship to now um, if she's in a relationship that spans the amount of time as Britney Spears song toxic, um, it's done by the end of the song. And that's what I love about her. She's got that realization that, uh, if she's in something that doesn't feel right, she's gone. Usually that's not too great for the uh, male counterpart in the relationship, but, you know, that's fine. Um, uh, again, this is a rated R uh, comic book film. Um, there's a lot of words you see. I believe the first penis in a DC uh, comic book film, I would say it's the first in a um, 
first for the uh, first penis in a comic book film. However, I know for a fact that was in um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, the Ryan Reynolds um, Marvel film. Deadpool. Yes, um, you got to see some peen in that. So, for DC, at least this is the first. Um, this is the first peen that they. Oh have. yeah, the guy but in the village. <laughs> I gotta love um, the thing that makes this so great. Which with Marvel, they have the heart and the action, um, and there's a humor with this, which I think was um, DC has been missing a lot of. Yeah. Is again, you have the action. You have. Um, you have the freaking hilarity. I mean, there's some laugh out loud um, scenes in this. You've got a lot of blood that you don't see normally in uh, Marvel. But with this one, you do have the heart, which again, you don't normally see or you haven't in um, the past um, DC films. They've attempted. I'm not going to say they haven't tried, but this one actually does it without shoving it down your throat. And again, the thing um, one other thing about this is they have a number of backstories with people that they don't shove down your throat where they have the list of everything they've done. It's like, you know, let somebody, I mean, these, most of these people are just complete strangers trying to see if they can trust each other or what's going on because they're all in a situation. They're like, dude, we're here. If we don't do what we're going to, um, supposed to do, our heads are going to blow up. So I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're supposed to do. So they have to go by that. I like how that's very natural. I like how while this was filmed during COVID, and I have this neat little thing. As far as I know, I thought it was filmed during COVID. Um, a number of the bystanders then have to get this, which um, this is the second film where you've got some sort of entity that's taking over the world, which most of the people in the background have to wear these masks. With this, I think it's kind of clever, especially if you can do that during COVID, which I think they probably did some sort of thing. So you kind of have like, people wearing masks on set all the time. Um, Starro, Starro the Conqueror is who you're holding up. The uh, yeah. giant kai, starfish kaiju that uh, debuted, which by the way, Starro the Conqueror, not a, not a Suicide Squad villain. Suicide Squads don't have a villain per se, like Batman to the Joker and Green Goblin to Spider-Man. Uh, the Suicide Squads go on, uh, you know, like missions to free a country like they were going to, maybe, possibly, but they're there to get information that the government is wants kept hidden. That That's most of these stories in the comic book that I'm holding up, by the way. This is the uh, original Suicide Squad 80s comic book that John Ostander, who was in the military, took his military knowledge and then put it into a book like this, uh, resurrecting an old uh, DC comic. And, and like, this isn't... Um, like the big first appearances of a bunch of characters. These characters had been around for, for a while, but they're like the loser villain characters, you know, banded together to get some time off their sentence. Um, you know, and on the cover, by the way, we have uh, Captain Boomerang and Rick Flagg who are in the movie, as well as Deadshot, who was played by Will Smith in the original movie. Um, and the Enchant, by the way, that's, that is the Enchantress, by the way, from the comic book, not a swamp. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I gotta very, say... Very I Halloween, like uh, very, uh, so by the way, what I was going to say is Star of the Conqueror is a Justice League villain, been around since the 60s, and originally, James Gunn wanted the Suicide Squad to fight Superman, Henry Cavill, but DC was like, yeah, I think we're losing Henry Cavill because we don't know how to make a Superman movie correctly, which literally is why you're losing Henry Cavill, so uh, do Star of the Conqueror, sure, so... Also, uh, you know, fun. shout out to uh, the absolute amazing Sylvester Stallone. Everyone's been saying how great his performance is. His was great. He's one of my favorites. Um, it was just sweet to see him, uh, his evolution through the film. Mm -hmm. But I love that, um, you know, the people that actually save the day are the ladies. I mean, um, let's get real. Without Harley Quinn and Ratcatcher 2, uh, everything would have been lost. So, you know, give it up for, I'm going to say her name, Dan Daniela uh, Melchior, Melchior um, and Margot Robbie. Um, is that giving away? It's, it's been out for a few weeks, you know, but I think I really liked how the film actually had a number of female leadership roles wherever, wherever like small or big um, with the rebels, the uh, leader was um, female. When you go inside um, the prison, a number of the people who are in charge are female. I think that was great. I don't know. Um, I know a few people that I know 
noticed that. So kudos to um, James Gunn about that. Um, loved all the blood. I thought the special effects were dynamic and great. You've got these huge sets. You've got this crazy band of people who never would normally um, be together. I liked how uh, when, you know, guys are trying to save a lady and the lady's already saved herself. That was so sweet. That was really cute. And I liked um, Harley Quinn's reaction when, you know, they knew that she was there. They were going to try and save her. And um, she ended up saving herself. But she, um, but she even said, like, I can go back if you want to save me. I can go back. Like, really? That was really sweet. And I'm like, I thought that was sweet, too. One thing I didn't understand, and here's a trigger. If you like birds, um, this movie does not. Uh, there's a couple things in the film that it's like, damn, what did birds do to you, James Gunn? Because there's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty brutal. Oh, I mean, oh, oh. Of, it's its little Katie, comeuppance, that, but. No, no, that, uh, the Twitter explain that. What is Twitter's logo? I have no idea because I don't tweet. You know, um, Twitter, Twitter's logo is a, is a Tweety bird. Oh, is that why what, they, um, they did, did that? Get, what did James Gunn get fired for from Marvel? For tweets that he did like 13 years ago that he made them aware of and stuff, but then they hired Well, the, no, the Republicans who are against James Gunn, like some, it, it's honestly, it was, it was, it was a lot of, uh, it, it, it gets very political, but it was, it was very heavily political, like uh, parties that are fans of Marvel and stuff like that in DC were the ones that were constantly pushing out to guns, like, you know, uh, not okay behavior, but some of his tweets are like, okay, that's, I, t I take that with a grain of salt. And I think I've heard that on Saturday Night Live. I'm not offended. But some of them were, yeah, like, I wanted to, like, he did tweet out one tweet that I was like, no, gun, not okay, that I would hire Iron Man to go to the DC universe to F the lesbian out of Batwoman. <laughs> Okay, I don't know that one. I mean, I know one that he did, but again, I know that he apologized for it. I don't know why people don't just take the tweets down. If you can, they did, um, well, yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, his, they've all been like, no one's retweeting about, about you know, in, in regards to this movie. No one's like posting a review of the movie and being like, but Gunn said this years ago. Great. Gunn also admitted he had an alcohol and a drug problem and has recovered from it. And his brother stands by him. His ex-wife stands by him. What's her name from the office that was in Slither? Yeah, you know? Jenna Fisher. Jenna Fisher. By the way, the blonde IT girl in the movie Jennifer is Holland his, is his um, Yeah, is his longtime um, significant other. Yes. And also, if you missed it, you blink and you miss it. His brother, Sean, plays both Weasel and he is also Calendar Man walking through the prison with the, um, and if anyone doesn't know who Calendar Man is, he's the guy who has the, uh, the months tattooed around his bald forehead. Uh, go watch Batman The Long Halloween. He's a bigger character in that. But yeah, that was Sean Gunn, one of the Ravagers from Guardians of the Galaxy, which of course we had, you know, Michael Rooker making an appearance, very funny. And of course, TDK was Nathan Fillion. Well, and a number of his close, like David Dismalshin is a close friend of James Gunn, Steve Agee, who plays one of the, I, who plays the I, IT guy, uh, Stephen Blackwell, who plays um, the helicopter, um, uh, helicopter um, that uh, drops off Task Force, the first um, section of Task Force X. Yes. And then um, a number of his other friends who are in the business um, he makes sure that, you know, they're all very talented people. So they've earned, you know, these spots that they've had, but he always makes sure he wants to work with people that he likes, he likes, that he knows, that he knows is going to be there for him and vice versa. And then anyone that ends up working with him has always had um, great things to say. And I think, you know, that's one of the things with his sets, you know, it's a James Gunn set, you know, you're going to get a, uh, something of quality but you're also going to have a good time doing it and i really like that um, i'm sure he probably had something to do with the music which especially with this year i don't know there's just a number of films that kind of overdo it where they um and even it's the um last one where it's like just too many clips of too many songs and this one there's a number of time where you don't hear anything and my reaction to that was like thank God, I don't need to hear 
clips of songs that have been in like four dozen films like for the past 20 years. So thank you for just, you know, let the conversation happen. Let it be, you know, some instrumental stuff. And then if you want to throw in um, some songs, Great, but you don't have to oversaturize it to make us fall in love with this. Like, I right. want to fall in love with the characters. It's and I did. Cool. That's why, again, I am a fan of the Suicide Squad, and I highly uh, recommend people to see it. Some of the songs in the movie, I think I, yeah, because I saw it once, and then the second time I saw it, I knew when they were going to drop, so I was just like, okay, Shazam, Shazam, Shazam. Uh, whistle for the choir, can't sleep, rain, uh, just a gigolo, and oh no, and I think that was the last one. Oh no, is the one that you hear in the trailer when they're um, the original Suicide Squad trailer that came out for the DC event last year, where basically they show you the comic book character and then they flip him into the li live action version and then they flip to the poster. Uh, that was the song that was played during that trailer. Oh no. Um, Taika Waititi having the year of his life because <laughs> he's Ratcatcher's father. He's Ratcatcher 1. Uh, Rat Ratcatcher, by the way, in the comic book is not a sympathetic character. He's an SOB. He's like a Batman villain that you're like, you know, Batman needs to punch this guy in the face a few times. I don't know if he has a daughter, but he, he uses rats to kill and it, kill people and steal things. I mean, he's not a good person whatsoever. They They needed a sympathetic character for people to latch on to one reviewer i said that like was like oh rat catcher 2 is the millennials they just want to sleep all day and don't want to do anything i'm just like that's 100 percent true yeah but that's what rats rats are nocturnal i know people were probably going to think that she's like sleeping all day because she's um lazy on it it's like rats are nocturnal so she's got that connection with the rats that she sleeps when they do um i think I don't know if that's been brought up, but I mean, I kind of got that because when I was watching that, but I love that Taika Waititi, honestly, in my opinion, and I'm going to quote this right here, has the best quote of the film when his daughter asks um, why rats, Papa, and he says, rats are the lowliest and most despised of all creatures, my love, but if they have purpose, so do we all. And that, I think, is the key to the film because if people, if you have give the rats purpose, and that gives the rest of humanity a fighting chance. And because of that, that, you know, spoiler, um, we end up winning. It's uh, it's uh, funny that this is, might be the only chance unless the court, I mean, they're both British. They both done, done British television before. I hope we can see it again. Seeing Idris Elba with Peter Capaldi on screen was fantastic. Former Doctor Who and Idris Elba and everything he's done. That would be great to see them working together again. Not in so much a, I got a gun in your back. And this is what I'm going to do to you kind of thing. But uh, if you like the Suicide Squad, if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. It's still in theaters. It's streaming on HBO Max till the end of the month. Absolutely the best of the DCEU films. Um, I love Shazam. This now beats Shazam. So Yeah. Yeah. So, and I hope they do something else with it. James Gunn has said, oh yeah, they plan on doing more of these. I'm like, great. The box office is all over the place. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I don't well, think they'll I be doing it with as big of a cast as they had in this one, obviously, but we will, we will wait and see. Um, there's so much Suicide Squad content out there. There's two comic book series to go check out. Uh, by the way, King Shark had a, uh, a free comic book day issue written by Tim Seeley, who is currently writing Superman versus Lobo, and their, their, their direction to him was write it like James Gunn's movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I didn't see that. I oh, just it's, love, uh, um, if, you go to your comic, if you go to your local comic book store, they might still have copies of the King Shark one shot. It has King Shark like barking out of the water, and it goes into a little bit of his backstory about how he's, the, uh, he's basically the son of a shark god. Which is a joke in the Suicide Squad movie. Amanda Waller writes it off as like, whatever, I don't believe this to be true, but there's aliens from space and a king of Atlantis. But I can't possibly believe there's a shark god. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Amanda Waller. <laughs> well, I mean, I love that Idris Elba was like the king of the F-bombs in this film. And um, I like that Joel Kinnaman, uh, unlike he was in we the first one, he just seems a little bit more relaxed in this one. Maybe it's because of the set. I don't know. Maybe because he didn't have his girlfriend 24-7 um, that he was worrying about. But he just seemed more relaxed and more in that um, leader uh, capability that I would have liked to have seen him in um, right. the last one. Um, but 
I loved, I, I mean, I was a little sad when a number of people died. I was really sad when a number of people died. I was a little sad when a number of people died. I didn't even understand when other people died because um, there's some in the beginning that it's like, I, I can't feel for you because I don't really know you, but that's too bad. But okay, uh, that was fun to watch it happen. It's like, wow, there, there's your head. That's, that's brains. That's a lot of stuff I'm seeing inside you that I wasn't planning on it. But Some okay. of the best parts of the movie were the brains. Yeah. And the, uh, the gore with the, the big star reveal. Just, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, right. yeah, good stuff. Right this up there with film, guns, other gory work. This is a film with tons of star power. And if anybody, I'm going to say, how about if we get like 10 comments and somebody wants one of these little um, Suicide Squad, you can put it on your phone. You can stick it in your phone and it's a little fan for your phone. We get 10 comments. I will mail this to you. How about that? You should have done the whole review wearing one of those starfish. I mean, it's kind of a pain because you can't really, it's like this. We can still hear you. <laughs> it doesn't really, you know, see it kind of. It reminds me of the Burger King uh, hats that you could wear if you were a kid. But yes, I, re I recommend very much going to see Suicide Squad. It's better than Cat. I'd see it again and again. Yes, definitely going to be uh, adding it to my collection on Blu-ray and DVD. I may I own every single issue of the original run of the uh, the original sixty-six issues by John Ostender of the Suicide Squad, as well as tie-ins and annuals. And the current Suicide Squad book is. Definitely a big plug for the movie, but it's 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 very good. Go to your local comic book store, support your local comic book store. We saw I saw this at the show. Uh, I saw this at Blackstone Valley Cinema Deluxe in Middlebury. So go there and check it out. And if you uh, if you are feeling safe enough to go to the movies, otherwise it is on HBO Max until the end of the month. So another nine days. It's only no uh, ten days. Ten days. So there's thirty one days in the month. So. And if you're in Kansas City, go see it at Screenland Armor, where I got to see it, wear a mask 24-7 um, in it. It's still a great experience. Yep. Be safe. It's better than cats. I'd see it again and again. It's better than cats. I'd see it again and again. And I'm going to own it when it comes out. But yeah, go see it. Check out the rest of the videos here on the Radio Horror YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, and comment. And we'll be back. In a week or so, hopefully you checked out The Night House and Candyman, whichever one got posted first here on the Radio Horror YouTube channel.